Well, aside from winning the lottery, what are some of the things you need to do financially to be able to handle a baby? We're asking these kind of questions to Todd Mark, Consumer Credit Counseling Service, and Denise Fields, co-author of Baby Bargains. All right, you guys, B from California has a question about really trying to weed through through Florida, I'm sorry, trying to weed through all the options out there. You don't want to latch on to everything. B? Yes, uh, with so many products and services being marketed to expectant parents, which of those do you suggest one can do without? Oh, the list is so long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we could be here all day. One thing that we always try to recommend to parents is that you try to take an experienced mom to the store with you before you make your buying decisions because they can often help you weed out the junk. They've been through it already and they know what to look for. There are two things you must have when you um, ha bring your baby home. You must have a car seat because you can't leave the hospital without it and you must have a place for a baby and that's typically a crib. Those are the only two things that are an absolute requirement. I, I disagree, Denise. I think, <laughs> a, I think a, a diaper genie is essential. Oh, well. Your house is going to smell. <laughs> that's, no. that's true. There are a couple of those side things that are nice to have. No, no I'll tell you a, a great thing you can save on uh, and what I, I love is not buying baby food coming out. Formula. Huh? Now, I'm not. I'm not oh. anti-formula, but you know, think about during the breastfeeding. I'm days talking and about months, right? uh, about nursing, <laughs> okay. and you know, there's all these great health benefits. But I'm not here to plug those today. Just from a financial standpoint, think about not having to buy formula for six months, nine months, twelve months. That's it's, right. it's a, it's a yeah. great. Uh, it's a great savings, and for dads, <laughs> it's an extra benefit because guess what? What. I can't help out with nursing in the middle of the night. So. Oh, so, okay. I was like, where are no, we going with this no, one? No, but, but seriously, it is, it is World Breastfeeding huh. Week. And if people are interested about That's that, right. they can do a, a search online for World Breastfeeding Week. And there's yeah. tips. They can explain all the health benefits and the financial benefits. Yeah, you hmm. can save about $500 in that first year if you don't uh, wow. use formula. That's a big difference. All right, yeah. Ina in Texas is on bed rest. But she has a question about unemployment benefits. Ina? Hi, um, my family leaves, the 12 weeks will be up shortly. And my question is, I'll be without a job at that point. Can I qualify or apply for unemployment and receive unemployment? Hmm, Todd? Well, uh, are you keeping your job? Well, according to HR, they mentioned after the 12 weeks, if I cannot report back to work, which I only, you know, unfortunately, I'll be having the baby at the end of the 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So probably I will not be able to go back to work after the 12 weeks. So they mentioned my job would be terminated. Wow. So well, I'm kind of looking at my options. Are there any state benefits like unemployment that I could apply for to help me out financially until I'm able to go back to work? Well, sure. If, if your job is officially terminated, you're eligible for unemployment. Uh, my question would be, instead of having to, to terminate from the job, do you have any short-term or long-term disability insurance through, through work that would cover your your longer than 12 week period being out. Now from what I understand with my HR, short term is combined with my family leave period. Mm -hmm. um, in order for me to apply for long term, which is after the 12 weeks, I would have to terminate my, my position and then I could apply for long term. Wow. Whoa. Well, that is severe. And you know what's interesting is if this is how the, your job is treating you uh, through your delivery and I'm sorry that you're stuck on bed rest, but that would probably make you question whether you want to go back there after you're able to go back to work, wouldn't you think? True. <laughs> Boy, that's a lot to consider. There, that, there that is, is a lot. quite a bind. All right, we're going to take more questions, more of your email questions and your phone call questions right after this short break, and we'll be right back. We're talking about Baby Makes Three, how do you keep up with the expenses, how do you prepare in your family planning, all the things to think about. Todd Mark of Consumer Credit Counseling Service and Denise Fields, co-author of Baby Bargains, they're both helping us sort through all the many, many options out there. It really is quite confusing and complex out there. Jesus of Washington is on the telephone and Jesus has a question for you, Denise. Okay. Hi, Denise. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay, great. I wanted, I've heard that the uh, baby products industry is very uh, generous with coupons, and I wanted to first ask you if you have any 
uh, information about getting those coupons through your book or if you know of any other uh, sources where uh, people can go and get the uh, coupons without necessarily having to call up everybody under the sun uh, directly. The good news is you can go online and almost get uh, sign up for all kinds of things. Uh, um, if, if you uh, formula feed, you can sign up for coupons for that, for uh, uh, diapers. Um, I think Fisher Price has some couponing, mm -hmm. and most of it you can do on their website. So it's very easy now. You don't have to call around. And if you sign up, if you register for gifts at a baby store, a lot of times you'll get on a mailing list and get those coupons as well. And to both of you, um, there are consignment shops out there as well, and sometimes you can get some bargains. But I understand there are some real red flags, Todd, certain things you really don't want to buy at a consignment store. What are they? Sure. Well, well Frederica, we have gotten plenty of clothes from consignment stores. You know, hand-me-downs, a, a T-shirt is going to be just as good next year as it is this year as it was last year. But say something like a crib. It might be five years old, it might be 20 years old, and you don't know what the safety standards have changed over the past years. You know, uh, the Consumer Product Safety Commission is always saying, well, this is the latest and greatest needs to protect your baby. So, so I don't know about yeah. getting a used crib. And specifically, you don't know, maybe mm -hmm. the wood or the plastic is warped. That's and something you'd, you'd be, wouldn't want to put your baby in. And Denise, in. I guess the same would apply for like car seats That's as right. Well. You, you never know if a car ha seat has actually been in an accident before, and there can be some damage to it internally that you may not notice or mm -hmm. see. So a crib and a car seat, those are two things that mm. uh, you should probably try to buy uh, brand new. Okay. From Dallas, Quabina writes, we're expecting a baby in November. We've been, u we've been buying U.S. Treasury Series 1 bonds for his college education. Is this a good investment, Todd? Jeep Quabena, well, congratulations on your new baby. And I think we're going to be talking about college savings next week on the program. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's something very, very good for everybody that they don't know about. It. It's called the 529 College Savings Plan. You put dollars in this year and you let it grow and grow and grow. And but that's once the baby's born, right? For well, 529? You know, yeah, but if the baby's coming in November, she can start putting her money aside now, open up the account once the baby is born. And it, it works much like a Roth IRA and that you put the money in, it's going to grow tax-free, you take it out tax-free. Wow. So that's just a no-brainer. You do want to search around. The, each state ha has different plans, and they're run by different companies with different management mm -hmm. styles and fees. So you want to go to one of the two uh, main websites, savingforcollege.com or collegesavings.org. Wow. And something you learned firsthand, Todd, about medical insurance, life insurance with your new baby, Joshua, that it's not so easy as just going to your employer and expanding your medical insurance. Sometimes you want to shop around. Well, absolutely. And, you know, many times an insurance carrier, when they're providing family coverage, they're just assuming that you're going to have families at, at the workforce that has one child, some are going to have seven kids or five kids, and they're going to have one rate for all families. Well, when we had Katie four years ago, it didn't really pay for us because in our case, insurance was going to go up from $260 for my wife and I to $520 just to add Katie. So instead, we went shopping around, got an individual policy for my daughter independently, an additional $70 a month. So we saved wow. nearly $200. Well, Joshua came along, and again, we got him a coverage of $70 a month. So we're still saving about $100 a month, not uh -huh. going with the uh, default one through work. All right, Denise, and we've given folks so many options, so much to think about. I'm sure everyone's overwhelmed now. If we can just now kind of wrap it all up with, if you're just getting started, what is the first purchase perhaps you recommend that someone needs to make when trying to make one of their first investments as the baby's on the way? I think that's a good question. I, I think you probably want to shop around and get and find a place for your baby to sleep, whether that's a cradle or a crib or a bassinet. I think having a nice, safe piece of furniture for your child that you can depend on is probably the best thing because, you know, babies sleep those first few months. I, I, I know Todd's isn't sleeping yet, but, <laughs> Not yet. you know, they will. It, and they, huh? they, or they sleep when you're awake is how it usually works, but they do sleep most of the time. So having a safe place for your baby to sleep is, is probably the number one most important thing. All right. And new dad then, what would be your big recommendation? Well, besides buying Denise's book, which was absolutely fabulous for us four years <laughs> ago, you. Denise, you know that. But seriously, what I would say to do is, is go create a budget. Figure out what you're going to mm -hmm. be spending up front on all the furniture. Are you going to have help from mom and dad? Figure out what these insurance costs, yeah. college savings. 
figure out what it's going to take and whether or not you can have somebody stay at home or if you need child care, what you're going to do. Wow. All right. Todd Mark of Consumer Credit Counseling Services and Denise Fields, co-author of Baby Bargains. You just saw the cover of the book a moment ago. Thanks to both of you for joining us. and We appreciate Thanks. it. And hopefully we've given a lot of new parents or parents to be out there some ideas and some ways to figure out how to cut costs, if at all possible. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot. And that's all we have time for right now. I'll be back after a quick break with today's top stories.